So let's start off with the, uh, you know, we are in level five. We are currently doing this particular unit, which is business organization in global context. Hmm. So this particular unit that we are studying, uh, you know, is uh, focused primarily on, you know, understanding economics of a particular country. So in the first instance, we looked at some details like businesses, types of businesses, different sectors, responsibilities, stakeholders. We also looked at how businesses are working, uh, you know, in a global environment today, because most companies, when they produce a lot of goods and services and they export to outside their home country, then and when they start operations in different places, the, they become what is called global organization or organize or businesses or organizations which work and operate in different geographies, different countries. In the second learning outcome, we are going to be looking at understanding um, how the how these businesses, when they uh, you know function in different countries or in different geographies, how do they get affected by external environment and how do they deal with globalization? So when you look at mm, in the level four and five, when we are studying these units, you know, we have studied something called business environment. Now in business environment, we see there is a term called, you know, obviously we look at markets and then we also look at a term called businesses or organizations. So when we look at this, in the previous session, we covered that, you know, how businesses, organizations can be affected by internal and external factors. So micro and macro, internal is something which is within the control of the company, external which is without, with its, these factors are not within the control of the company. So external factors we talked about could be dealt with pestle framework, when we talked about political, legal, technological, environmental, bad weather, for example, is environmental. Uh, so these factors can affect the business from outside. And they affect not just one business, but number of businesses or an area or a market or a country in which it can get affected. Now, today, we are going to learn about some of the details about how the businesses operate within a particular geography. And we look at some key economical terms, economic terms in particular, not economical, economic terms in particular. Things like what is meant by GDP, what is inflation, what is fiscal policy, monetary policy. How do we look at, you know, balance of trade, debt, taxation, inflation? These are kind of things that we will study today because these factors which are outside the business uh, and in the business environment can influence the activities of a business or an organization. And this can lead to businesses doing well, making profits, or it can uh, look at, you know, um, make the business, you know, less profitable, the business sometimes you will see goes into red or loss and if it goes into profit you know it goes into black when it starts to make money so let's look at some of these key terms which we have to cover in learning outcome two so in learning outcome two we are essentially today looking to study you know this particular uh, uh, learning outcome so in the first one we are looking at understanding what is the impact of external factors on global business organizations and in this, what we have to study, we have to understand. So let's look at the key terms first, and then we will go into the assessment criteria, which is to look at understanding, you know, benefits and challenges. We look at what measures the government can take to improve business activities. Sometimes you get to hear the term that, you know, government is looking at changing the policy in order to boost the uh, businesses in the country, growth in the country. Hmm. How does that how do they boost the growth? Sometimes they drop the rate of uh, interest. So money, um, when the rate of interest drops, the availability of money becomes cheaper from the banks. That means businesses can borrow uh, money at a lower rate and then invest into growing the business, buying machinery, you know, expansion, things like that. So we look at some of those things. And then we'll also understand how the economic performance of a specific nation. So here we are going to take an example of UK. UK. Here we have to understand, you know, what is, how does the performance of, uh, you know, economy in a particular country affect the operations of a business. So we will look at understanding UK and then within UK, what, we are, what I'm going to do is 
look at understanding and giving you example of say tesco or yeah. or marks and spencer you know marks and spencer is a very big company in the uk uh, and they are into food clothing grocery home products and things like that so not mk sorry it is marks and spencer mns so we look at m yep. and s <coughs> so we look at discussing you know the uk economy performance and how it affects the uh, you know functions of uh, companies big companies which have operations in india china you know uh, indonesia africa us and european countries so let's look at the key terms first do you know what is um, gdp gdp yes gdp is in inside a uh, country their benefits benefits or benefits right gdp oh, and, okay that's that's a good try now gdp basically stands for gross domestic product in layman terms if i have to explain gdp is gdp is actually the sum total of all the activities which an economy does uh, in terms of its value so if you look at individual people first so say for example you might be earning 100 dollars if i look at somebody else the entire population they are earning or you know they are spending or buying things and that spending buying earning is if i add all that up which happens because of products they buy sell and if i look at the whole productivity of yeah. the country in terms of its population and some total of all that in terms of market value in terms of money terms if i look at that will be called in layman terms gross domestic product so it is the economic output you know when you say what is your output in the office or sometimes when you say that okay my computer over is this much uh, sometimes you say i earn this much income but if i look at asking all people in a particular country how much they earn what kind of uh, you know turnover their business has and if i add all of that together that will give us something called gross domestic product that means the total output of the economic activity in a country will be called gdp okay gdp okay so example here very basic if you have four members in a family and each of the members work and they earn some income like some you earn 100 dollars your brother earns maybe 400 dollars your father earns 2000 dollars your mother earns 200 dollars if i add all the income of the four mm -hmm. people in the family that will give me the household income combined household income of the family isn't it mm -hmm. similarly if i look at gdp if we look at the combined output of the economy that means each and every individual's output in terms of money value that would be called gross domestic product mm -hmm. now another term what do you mean by balance of payment so these are economic terms that we are discussing today now balance of payment is basically deficit which the country uh, you know accumulates by importing goods against the exports so sometimes you see that when you are, as of now what we do get to see in the market there is a trade war happening between america and the china between the us and china there is a trade war on so us is raising tariffs on chinese goods import of chinese goods and china is also retaliating by increasing imports or duties on import of american goods by chinese companies so what is happening in this case is if we look at balance of trade balance of trade is that when a company when a country exports and imports and imports are higher than exports or exports are lower than imports then in that case what we get to see is that we you know at some stage if you are earning 100 and you are spending 200 dollars that means you are going in deficit isn't it hmm. sometimes when people what they do is they have a credit card your credit card limit is say 1000 dollars but you go out hmm. in a month and you spend 2000 dollars on your card because you have a limit of 2000 dollars but next month when you get your wages and your salary you have only 1000 dollars because your salary is 1000 so even if you spend 2000 you're still in a deficit of 1000 dollars because that has to be paid back to the credit card company on which you are accumulating interest or you know capital 
So when we look at balance of payment, balance of payment means it's a deficit which the country's export, uh, a country imports more goods and services than the export it does, uh, you know, from that country. So it, it it basically means you are looking at borrowing more than uh, you know uh, earning more. Hmm. So the difference between borrowing and spending is nothing but balance of trade. Difference between import and export is nothing but balance of trade. Okay, so these are terms that you have to understand. You know, these are definitions, economic definitions, which you have to understand. Let's look at um, you know some other terms. Do you know what is inflation? Inflation, inflation, uh, inflation. Have you heard the term inflation? Yeah, inflation. Uh, income outcome, <laughs> income outcome. Not really, to be honest. Inflation is, inflation is nothing but, you know, rate at which the prices increase over time. Now, you must have seen uh, that petrol, when you grew up, you know, petrol was cheaper in uh, Philippines, isn't it? Today, because of the rising dollar, you know, the price of the dollar is rising. So what is happening is the fuel prices on the pumps are increasing. So what has happened is the rate at which the price has increased over time results in the falling value of the money. That means it results in the fall of value of money. Mm. If I look at 20 years back in the UK, not 20, so I would say 15 years back in the UK, one liter of petrol was 69 pennies. But today, one liter of petrol is one pound and 26 pennies. So what has happened is, if I have to fill petrol in my car, if I want to sit and go to the pump and say, okay, I need to fill the petrol by one pound. So if I look at 15 years back, one pound was allowing me to get how much liter? You know, 15 years back, the rate of, uh, you know, the price of fuel was 69 pence to a liter. Today, the price is 126. That means one pound and 26 pennies. So in 2002, or 2002, when I look at, I could take $1 to the fuel station and I could get 1.5 liter of petrol. Hmm. But if I go to the pump today, one pound of, uh, you know, one pound of money or uh, one pound essentially will buy me only 0.7 liters of fuel for petrol. So what has happened is the value of the money, one pound, one pound has remained the same, but because the price has increased over time, the same amount of money is actually buying me less petrol in the gas station. So what has happened is the rise, the rate at which the prices have risen have resulted in fall of, uh, you know, resulted in the literal fall of money in terms of what it can buy. Do you understand this point? Uh, can you explain one more time? <laughs> yeah. okay. So if I look at in one dollar, I could buy two chocolates. Hmm. In say 2010, today yeah. if I have to buy one dollar, can buy only one chocolate. Hmm. So what has happened? Uh, you know that the value of dollar, which is one dollar, has fallen, hmm. wherein hmm. it can now only buy one chocolate in the market. But whereas if I look at 2010, 10 years back that same one dollar would buy two chocolates. Yeah. So what happened is the actual price of chocolate has not changed, but what has happened is the value of money, you know, which is value of one dollar has fallen in the market because of the increasing cost of raw material to make the chocolate. So rate of what is inflation? Inflation is the rate at which prices increase over time, resulting in a fall in the purchasing value of money. Okay, so this is what is inflation. Now, what do you mean by borrowing? Borrowing. Government borrowing work. They Correct. Lend, they, lend, they lend something. That is correct. So when you borrow, what you're doing is you're borrowing money from the bank. You're borrowing yeah. money. Sometimes you see companies when they have to raise capital or money from the stock market, they issue shares. They issue debentures, which are long-term 
uh, you know, bonds. So what the government does is, when the government has to borrow money from International Monetary Fund or the Asian uh, World Bank or World Bank in general, what they have to do is they have to give some guarantee. And that guarantee can be given in the form of bonds or, you know, bills, which the government will honor at, at some stage by returning that money to the bank. So government borrowing, how does it work? Government, when it borrows, it needs to borrow money for what does the government need to borrow money for? Hmm. Can you think of reasons why government needs to borrow money? No. Okay. When you have to, when the government decides to make new roads, new houses, new airport, hmm. new railways, you know, new hospitals, new schools, government has to spend money. So if government cannot raise enough money from taxes from the uh, you know citizens of the country, then at some stage the government has to borrow money from the market. And how does it borrow money from the market? It goes to big institutions like the World Bank, International Monetary Fund, IMF, and you know the Asian Development Bank, which is started by China, ADB, World Bank, you know International Monetary Fund. So what it does is it goes to these big institutions to you know borrow money. Now, in order to borrow money, they have to issue what is called bonds or bills, which is guaranteed by gold. Have you heard of the U.S. Federal Reserve? You know what is U.S. Federal Reserve? Mm, no. Okay. What is, is the is federal? Yeah. What is the federal bank in uh, Philippines? The central bank in Philippines? DPI. DPI. So what is it? DPI is for form? Oh, I didn't see exactly. Yeah. Right. So this is the central bank, right? In Philippines. Yeah. Now, a lot of other private banks, if they have to raise money, they come to the central bank to buy, you know, borrow money. So central bank will give them money at low interest rates, which then is made available in the private banks and these private banks make money available to customers. So basically when you look at borrowing, what is happening is the government creates debt or, you know, creates debt by issuing government bonds and bills, a central government which owns the currency. So what is the currency in Philippines? What is the currency in Philippines? Filipino. Yeah. What is the currency? Filipino. Filipino. So when you look at Filipino, and what is it? Filipino rupee, Filipino dollar. Ah, uh, pesos. Pesos. Filipino peso. So when you look at government wanting to print more Filipino peso, it has to borrow money. Uh, in say from one of the institutions like International Monetary Fund or IMF Bank, but when they borrow money, they have to issue bills that the bearer of this bill, you know, the government will return so much money back to, you know, the the bank in so many years, and for that, you know, what they will do is they'll continue to pay so much interest. But if they can't pay the money, then they have to return, uh, they have to pay that in the form of gold, and that is why most central banks. When they print currency, new notes, new currency, they have to have that equivalent amount available in the form of gold bars in the central bank. Okay, let's look at what is balance of trade. Do you know what is balance of trade? So balance of balance trade is of trade. trade. So this is the difference between the country's imports and exports for given periods. So example here would be that in 20. 18 UK imported, you know, goods yes. worth 2.6, you know, billion uh, pounds. Okay, but if you look at the exports, UK exports in 2018 was 1.5 billion pounds. So what is happening is, if you see the imports are imports are more than exports. So this creates, you know, a deficit. So what is the deficit? The deficit is, it creates a deficit. That means the country is actually buying more than selling. So it is getting, it is getting less money 
hmm. in, uh, from raising taxes, but it is spending more. So yeah. this creates a deficit, and this deficit, which is the difference between the value of countries' exports to exports for a given period, 2017 to 20, 2017 or 2018, you know, is basically called balance of trade. Okay. Trade, yeah. Okay. Now, what is public finances? Public finances. Mm. Finances is money. Money. Yes. Uh, so, uh, con uh, in country you uh, have money, ha has money, having money. I, I would say when you, when you look at public finances, public finances would be, you know, it's the study of the role of government in the economy. That means it's a branch of economics which basically tells you that how the government looks at raising money from taxes and looks at spending money on services. Yeah. So when it raises money from taxes, when you earn income, when you get a salary, your employer cuts some basic form of tax. That tax is sent to the government. All such tax which is collected from business, imports, exports, business activities, salaries, wages, is something which the government earns. Now, anything which the government earns is basically government earnings. But when the government spends on hospital roads, bridges, trains, railways, it is spending money. So when you are spending money and you are earning money, and the difference between the two is nothing but, you know, the government's way of looking at finances. So like an accountant, you know, he or she looks at your credits and debits. He looks at your liabilities and assets. Similarly, the government also looks after public finances. The money which is raised from taxation by selling of government assets, you know, sometimes you will see government is selling off, uh, you know, government organizations. They are selling uh, public sector enterprises. And when they sell those public sector enterprises, what they are doing is they are essentially, you know, raising money. So that money, when it is spent on services for the uh, economy, is nothing but public finances. How do you manage your finance? If you get a, do you get pocket money from your parents, do you get pocket money? Allowance, allowance. Allowance, yeah, allowance or pocket money. So when you get yeah. that allowance, you know that if I get $200 every month, I need to manage my movies, I need to buy, manage other things, my outings, my, you know, trips with my friends, you know, my drinks and things like that. So what you do is you manage your finances. Because you have to make sure that it pays for everything, your bus pass, your fuel bill, you know, your clothes, you're eating out with friends, going to movies, you manage all your finances. Similarly, when the government looks at managing its finances from the receipts, that means the taxes it receives or money it raises to the money it spends is called public finance. Now, what is debt? Do you know what is debt? Debt? I don't know debt. Debt? Okay, if you earn, I'll say, have you heard about things like I owe you, I owe you this money. You must have borrowed mm -hmm. some money from your friend and then you say, okay, I need I need $10 and I will return that to you next week when I get uh, my allowance. So what you have done is you have borrowed money from your friend and that money until it is paid back, it is called debt. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, when, okay. We look, when we look at national debt, what is national debt? National, national debt, debt. Is, yeah, national debt. That means the total amount of money which is borrowed by the government at any given point in time is called national debt. Okay? Okay. Okay. Let's look at some other terms. What is economic growth? Do you know what is economic and what is growth in economy? Yeah. Just uh, leave leave uh, quality quality is better better quality okay. and yeah no 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 it's not about quality when you say economic growth when you look at a country's um, you know state of wealth if the businesses are doing well if everybody is spending in the market and the market is showing growth in terms of you know sales are increasing companies are making profit. Um, it's generally a good time, then you see that the economy is growing. That means everybody has got money to spend in their pocket. So the rate at which the country's economy grows in terms of the output of the country grows is called economic growth. 
Okay, it is represented okay. by you know a shift in countries production possibility. That means when you look at GDP, we looked at the first thing that we looked at is what is GDP? It is the total value of economic output of a country. Hmm. So when the GDP increases, what we see is that the company the country continues to grow. That means it is able to buy more things, borrow more money, because in general the economy is doing well. Now, what are the causes? Or what are the reasons why we see growth in economy? Why do you think, you know, some countries are growing? When you look at Indonesia, when you look at India, China, they are growing at six, seven percent every year. But when you look at countries like Germany, UK, US, they are growing at two, three percent. Why do you think there's a difference of growth between? Uh, countries in the Far East and the developed world. Hmm. Why do you think it is, uh, you know, growing in in faster growth is happening in Indian countries? Hmm. So if you look at the reasons, demand and supply. Sometimes you see demand and supply, right? Now what is demand? If you look at a product in the market and that product has high demand, that means everybody wants to buy, say. Uh, Let's take an example of a car. If, say, Mercedes is to introduce a new car model, and that car model becomes a hit with the consumer, that means all of them like that car. So what they will do is they'll go to the dealerships and try to book that car or buy that car. Now, if the bookings exceed the number of cars which Mercedes can supply in a month, that will create a bit of a backlog. That means you'll have waiting time for, for you to be able to buy that car. Because that item has become very popular. Now, when that happens, is that means the demand for the product has increased, and the supply is slow. That means the company is able to produce cars, uh, you know, lesser number of cars than the ones which consumers are interested in buying. Hmm. You follow? Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, what what is first the things then then. What is? Sorry, come again. Uh, uh, I can see uh, labor and capital, but I can't see first things. Land. <coughs> land. So uh, here, land, yeah. land. Yeah. What tends to happen is when we say demand increases, mm. you know, supply decreases. So when you look at causes of growth, that means how and why does the economy grow? Is that what happens is there are more products available in the market. For consumers to buy, and that stimulates the growth in economy. So sometimes when you look at supply side of things, there are always two sides. Uh, you know, one is demand, and the other is supply. So mm. if I want to, you know, look at, for example, buying. Uh, if the how do I find the demand is more? Say for example, we took an example of a car model. Now if the car model is selling well, is selling. Very good. You know, there are lots of sales happening. Lots of sales. That means, you know, there is a demand for this model in the car, uh, in the in the market for this car model. Now, if the demand exceeds the supply, is greater than supply. What does that mean? That the car manufacturer is able to produce, say, 200 cars a month, but the bookings are 500 a month. So what is happening is 300 are creating 300 orders which the customers are creating are adding getting added to a backlog. So in this case, the demand is greater than supply. And when mm. we look at supply, sometimes you will see the supply is greater than demand. That means mm. there are 500 cars in stock, you know, in stock with the dealer, but he is only managing to sell, you know, 200 a month. So what is happening is he has a lot of inventory. That means 300 cars are in inventory with the person, with the dealer. And uh, because of which, you know, what because of which what is happening is that he has a lot of inventory building up. So when you look at supply side of things, that means the manufacturer is producing more cars and mm. the uh, dealer is, is selling smaller number of quantities, smaller quantities than what the manufacturer is producing. So when you look at supply side of things, supply side of things, we look at three factors, land, labor, and capital. And land, when we look at, is because usually the prices 
you know, or the area in which the production can happen is always fixed. So here the company cannot open a new factory or, you know, create a new, um, basically factory in a short period of time. Okay. When you look at labor, when people work within factories, there are a number of people which are required to get training and then they start working. So any increase in the labor, you know, uh, when you look at any increase in the labor which is required to work within factories, what the factory owners do is sometimes they work three shifts. So there are eight hours, eight hours, eight hours, three shifts which run in the factory. During Christmas time, you know, when you see Christmas or New Year sales, Black Friday sales, what companies mm -hmm. have to do, they have to meet a lot of demand. So in this case, when they look at meeting a lot of demand, they have to increase the working of um, you know, the factories. And what they do is they increase the shift. So there's a day shift, there's a night shift, and there's an afternoon shift. So it mm -hmm. is running and producing goods across three shifts in a day, which is to meet the supply, uh, meet the demand in the market by producing enough goods which the customers are buying. So we look at, you know, when we look at economic growth, we look at supply side of things, and we look at, you know, individual factors that we need to understand. Now, mm -hmm. let's look at showing you, let's discuss and let me show you a few slides in terms of how big is UK economy. Now, after you understood the key terms, what I want to do is maybe give you an idea related to an example. So when you look at UK economy, UK is the sixth largest economy in the world. Why is it the sixth largest economy? You know, when I say sixth largest economy? Why six? Why six largest? Yes, because the GDP, gross domestic product, is $2.95 trillion, which means mm -hmm. if I add all the economic activity of the country, that means all the wages, salaries of all the people, 66 million people in the country, and we add that up, that gives us what is called the GDP. Now, the mm. GDP of the UK economy is sixth largest. So, American economy is 16 trillion. China is about 8 or 9 trillion. And then we have Japan, which is about 9 or 10 trillion. Then we have Germany. Then we have France. And then we have UK. So, mm. the gross domestic product of the country determines how, what is mm. the size of the economy. Okay? So, okay. UK is the fifth largest or the sixth largest because the difference is too small after US, China, Japan, and Germany. So we are the fifth or the sixth largest. Sometimes these figures change, you know, slightly. That means in the UK, an average person earns $39,000 per year, $39,500 a year, which is showing a rate of growth of 2.6%. Okay? okay? Now, when you look at some other, uh, you know, charts, just to get an idea in terms of UK economy. Now, how much is income versus expenditure? Now, UK is running a budget deficit. What was deficit? When I explained it. Yeah. Yeah. Deficit. So uh, what is deficit? <coughs> deficit is uh, uh, less, less uh, leg, leg of money, leg of money. Like, that is correct. But when we look at deficit from a point of view of country, what we are hmm. looking at is what is the deficit from a point of view of a country? Mm. Our country. Our country. Our country. Mm. So deficit, as you said, is correct. That means the amount of money that the country owes. You know, total amount of deficit. That means if UK government has borrowed a lot of money from the big institutions like World Bank, IMF, uh, you know, if they owe money back to the bank, then that is what is basically going to be the deficit. So if you see, the government earns $936 billion as revenue. You know, that is from taxes, sale of government treasuries, bonds, things like that. It is spending $1.6 trillion, $1.10 trillion dollars in terms of services. So what mm -hmm. it is creating is your spending is higher than is earning. It creates a budget deficit and that is what is a deficit. So here in this case, the deficit is 1.1 minus 936 billion is 160 uh, so, uh, in terms of deficit. Okay. okay. 
Now, okay. when we compare this value to the total debt which the com- country has, so if the UK economy earns hundred dollars, it is mm-hmm. having it is spending seventy nine point one percent, you know, a one hundred and seventy nine uh, dollars. So mm-hmm. deficit is if you earn and you spend more. So in this case, if the UK government is earning hundred dollars. it is spending 179 dollars so the debt that uk has is 1 is to 79 uh, 1 is to 1.79 trillion dollars okay mm. okay so what was inflation so how did you define inflation inflation the rate at which prices of the product increase in the market mm. yeah increase right? So when we look at inflation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's the measure at which the prices of goods increase in the market over time. So today the current rate of inflation in the UK is about two percent. Hmm. This rate of inflation is rising at one point five percent a year. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, if we look at some of the big industries which are producing jobs and employment within the economy, the biggest industry. in the uk is healthcare and social assistance mm. retail is the second biggest employer and then we look at other industries we look at manufacturing construction professional scientific and support activities and administrative and support activities so what is the biggest employer in the uk the biggest employer in the uk is healthcare sector and the second biggest employer in the uk is retail sector mm. and the third biggest employer is financial services london is a financial hub you know is is one of the financial capitals of the world like new york you have london you have hong kong you have dubai uh, you know these are financial capitals of the world so a lot of trading which happens in forex uh, you know uh, in currency you look at banks so the third biggest industry in the uk in terms of employment is financial services mm-hmm. now here in this side of the chart we look at labor force and unemployment how how what is the population of uk the population of uk is 64.5 million as per the last census now out of this 32 million people are 32.6 million people are employed hmm. so number of unemployed people in the uk sorry if i go back total number of unemployed people in the uk is 1.85 million which is 5 and a half or 5.7% unemployment rate hmm. right so okay. if you look at um you know the total population out of which how many are employed and how many are unemployed and when we look at average income in the uk average income in the uk is 27000 pounds or 42000 dollars yeah and then minimum wage in the uk is uh, this is a slightly old chart the minimum wage in the uk for 21 years and over is 8 pound and 30 pennies mm-hmm. so we compare all these we use all these terms you know that we learned things like gdp inflation deficit we looked at balance of trade we looked at national debt borrowing these are things that we want to study as key terms because we want to know the state of the economy so what we looked at is if you understand these key terms then you can look at any country and look at the state of the economy in that country mm. let me show you one or two charts you know for this session i've done one or two uh, you know um, searches and i'll show you an example of you know where you can look at about uk economy economy of say china india and that will give you you know the idea about how the country is growing what is the national gross national product domestic product gdp of us is 17 trillion average income is 54800 dollars it's growing at 2.4% if you look at revenues that means the money it gets in terms of raises from taxes and other things is 3 trillion the money it is spending is 3.52 trillion so it is spending more slightly than earning what is the public debt ratio inflation rate and then you know some of the largest industries like healthcare manufacturing retail accommodation and food services 
then employability rate, how much is the population, how much is employed, how much is unemployed, that is something that you can get to see in some of these charts. Okay? Okay. Now let's look at now some of the assessment criteria. You know, in terms of um, what we want to look at is the assessment criteria of, um, uh, you know, let's put it this way, the unit that we are covering. So the first one is evaluate the benefits and challenges of global business operations from external factors. So when we look at this, what are the challenges do you think the companies face when they work globally? Can you think of some challenges? Challenges? Uh... Can you think of some challenges which companies face when they work globally? Okay, okay, okay. I will, I will get back to you on that. Can you think of some challenges? Challenges. Mm. In companies, in companies. Hmm. What is challenges? Can you think of some idea in terms of what is challenges? Okay, let me give you an example. Right. You, when you talk about challenges, so let me minimize this. So when we look at, you know, challenges. So when I say challenges is challenges for businesses. Right? Number one, when you look at, say, we, we will talk and stick to, say, uh, you know, Samsung, because that is what uh, we have taken as an example in some of the previous sessions. Now, when I look at the, you know, the problems, what are challenges? Challenges are problems, issues, which the company faces when it is operating internationally. Okay? What could be the problems which Samsung could face? One problem could be if it starts, say, for example, if it starts operations, you know, in, say, I would say operations in, say, Nigeria. What kind of challenge the company would face? Can you think of what kind of challenge the company would face? Bonnie, Bonnie, and there... So, yeah. If I look at the kind of challenges the company can face, one challenge could be understanding the market. That means it wants to understand customers what they what like, they and like yeah. what they want. What yeah. They want yeah. Right? So this is one of the yeah. challenges. So what yeah. they have to do is they have to do some in order to understand this, they have to do what is called market research. So market research tell them the demographics, the, the, the preferences of the consumer. And, you know, that will allow Samsung to, uh, you know, study that what kind of products they should include and start selling in Nigeria as a market. Now, the mm -hmm. second challenge that they could face could be because of infrastructure. You know, infrastructure is lack of roads, say, for example, lack of roads, seaport, you know, train travel, train, uh, tra you know, basically, or transportation. Let's put it this way. Hmm. Now, when Samsung, Samsung has factories in Korea, China, from where it manufactures and produces all the goods, but if it has to sell that in Nigeria, Nigeria. it have to transport those goods to Nigeria. So, if there is lack of you know, transportation, like means the flights are not possible, the, the sea freight is difficult, and the goods are difficult to transfer from China to Nigeria, then this will be one of the challenges which the company faces. So if they send, you know, if they send goods 
via C, you know, it will take say twenty days to reach Nigeria from the sea. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. If they have to send if they send goods by air, then it will reach the same day, you know, from China, but it is going to be expensive because air freight is expensive. So mm. these are challenges which the companies face when they look at having operations in international or having international operations. You follow? Yeah? Yep. So when we look at those challenges, what are the other challenges? It could have challenge in terms of understanding culture. Culture. Yeah? Right. It could have under, uh, challenge. So understanding culture could be one challenge. Laws of the country. Yeah. That could be another challenge. It could also have other challenge, which could be because of technology. Mm-hmm. You know, internet and broadband connectivity is not that good. But if Samsung is selling phones in Nigeria, Galaxy phones, which require, you know, which can provide lots of facility, but because the infrastructure in terms of technology is very poor, that would mean that the product has advanced features but cannot be used in Nigeria by people because the internet or broadband is not easily accessible or the price at which the broadband or data is available on the phone is very expensive and beyond the reach of the average consumer in Nigeria. So these are things which could pose what is called challenges to companies, you know, because of having global operation. You follow? Global operation. Global yeah. operation. Yeah, okay. Wow. So that will cover your first learning outcome. And we can understand different challenges from a point of view of language, culture. That is one. You could have a challenge because of the laws and legislation in that country. The third and fourth challenge could be communication and technology. You know, sometimes lack of technology, lack of communication uh, in, from, you know, in in far fetch areas. So in Nigeria, there are lots of big cities, but when they have to sell into smaller cities, there is no structured infrastructure to do, you know, communication, like telephone line and other availability is not there. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you will see that they also face a challenge because they have to comply with stringent environmental protection laws. That means products will have to be recycled, they can't do away with their, uh, you know, products if they become faulty. So environmental conservation also can pose a bit of challenge d- depending on how the government policy is in that particular country. Mm. Okay. So okay. let's look at the second criteria. Review the measures taken by the government to influence activities of global business. So here we are talking, going to talk about what are the measures which the government can take to increase the business uh, for a particular company in, in, in order to boost employment, in order to, say, for example, increase the, um, you know, a demand in that particular country. So when we look at that, what we are trying to see in particular would be that sometimes you will see that in order to increase the business and make the conditions more favorable for companies to invest more money, the government will introduce policy which will allow businesses to thrive. That means allow businesses to grow. Now, what kind of things the government will do? So if I have to look at government, uh, you know, measures, what could be the measures which the government can take? One, it can introduce favorable policies, right? What are policies? They can, say for example, favorable policies, that means it can decrease the import duty that is one make the imports cheaper right it can uh, lower the interest rates so that capital or money is available to businesses or they can borrow you know at lower prices low interest rate basically correct correct what else can they do? They can uh, incentivize, 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 uh, incentivize the company. That means they can say, 
if you create employment within yeah. this area you know uh, say for example in order to grow the city or grow the you know particular place the government would say that if you create employment within this area the company will pay 5% lower income tax or sales tax so what is government doing the government wants to look at a, say a small city in nigeria wherein there are no companies or businesses so what they want to do they the government essentially government here wants to create jobs for younger you know people so what it does is it tells the companies you know who are looking at expanding business they are looking at expanding operations to choose this city as the uh, you know choose the city for for expansion of their operation so if they expand and open operations in you know in this city then the government is going to offer you know soaps or incentives as we call them so so you know which are basically soaps or incentives yeah. mm-hmm. soaps or incentives hmm. you know and that could be in the form of lower tax you know it could be that it will allow uh, you know or say reduce vat value added tax hmm. you know for the for the company so these are ways in which the government can create policy which will allow the business to set up operation they could also say that we will you know the government will also say we will give land for free to set up factories you know so in order to for the business to come and invest in that uh, city the government might say that okay we'll give you the land free if you set up a factory here and you know create employment hmm. okay so there are various ways to which the government can give you know the government can also give subsidies hmm. what are subsidies subsidies are basically rebates hmm. or you know discounts which yeah. the government can offer to businesses in order for them to uh, you know uh, set up operations and create local employment in that city hmm. is that okay okay so they can give tax exemption duty exemption as you can see they can also look at you know um, subsidies which are mentioned here so sometimes you'll see they will give subsidies uh, primarily to you know boost the demand for the business in that area hmm. now sometimes you will also see the government will also have you know long term they will do some long term planning by changing policy hmm. they will when you have you heard this term called fdi fdi fti 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 oh, yeah. this is called F-F-T-I. foreign direct investment hmm. so when the government introduces policies which allow private sector hmm. large private sector businesses large private sector businesses to come into the country hmm. and invest in uh, you know invest uh, or say for example create employment so here the so here the government allows companies to bring foreign direct investment and have more than 50% ownership in the business hmm. and that is where it also creates long term you know policy <coughs> to promote growth in the economy okay mm-hmm. now okay. let's look at the last uh, you know criteria when we are talking about how does how do you analyze economic performance of a specific nation and how does it impact activities of global business so here mm-hmm. what we are going to look at is uh, you know understand how the government essentially looks at creating benefit for countries uh, sorry companies 
uh, by a changing policy. So here we are going to look at fiscal policy, monetary policy. You know, these are mainly what are called government instruments, you know, which government uses to create favorable policy for, you know, growth, for the economy to grow. So if we look at globalization, you know, lots of companies are now having businesses which are in different countries. Now, in order for the businesses to grow, the governments look at creating, uh, you know, these uh, favorable conditions by looking at, you know, uh, introducing changes to their monetary and fiscal policy. So when we look at that, that is what you need to understand to cover this particular task. And let's look at some of the terms that we discussed. When we look at, uh, you know, inflation, recession, exchange rate, you know, rate of interest. These are basic things which the government will tinker or, you know, change in order to ensure that the performance of the economy continues to grow. That means the economy continues to grow, which means businesses are doing well. And if businesses are doing well, that means they're creating more employment. And if more employment is there, that means more people are in work. If more people are in work, they get more money in their pocket. And when they have more money in their pocket, they spend in the market. So mm -hmm. if you are employed, you are getting a salary every month, you are spending in the market. What is happening is that it is growing and running the economy of the country. Because when you earn, when you spend, you buy products and services and you pay for that in terms of money. It is drive, helping to drive other businesses sell their products and goods and services. Hmm. So this is where what we look at is the concept of you know, understanding how the hmm. government looks at tweaking the performance or basically the economic performance by depending on some of their instruments like the fiscal policy, monetary policy, inflation, exchange rate, rate of interest to stimulate the demand and growth in the economy. Hmm. Is that okay? Okay. So that is what we are going to do, cover today. And we have covered learning outcome too. Uh, any questions on this so far? Mm, not yet, but maybe, yeah. I will, if I review this, maybe, yeah, I have questions. Right. Yeah. So what I'm going yeah. to do is, I'm going to, this is a long presentation. It has lots of slides, but we have mm -hmm. covered the basic slides for us to understand learning outcome too. So what I'm going mm. to do is uh, I'm going to email this presentation to you, which you need to go through in detail, understand each other's slides, okay? Mm. And that will help you understand learning outcome too. Mm -hmm. two. Is that okay? Okay. No worries. So if there are no more questions, I'm going to end the session and I'll catch up with you uh, next Monday. Next Monday, okay. Okay? Okay. Okay. Take care, Benjamin. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Take care.